Okay, I guess we'll call this uh, meeting to order. Uh, we'll have a moment of silence. And we'll do the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you. And roll call, please. Mr. Caliguire. I'm here. Ms. Darmo. Here. Mr. Dovey. Here. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. Present. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Yes. Mrs. Cameron Ugian. Yes. Mr. Litwack. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. Here. And Mrs. Ter Tersich Keeley. Here. Okay, we'll do the reading of Statement of Adequate Notice, Exhibit A. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given as follows. Posting on school bulletin boards and main entrance doors on January 11, 2021. Sending a notice to the Burlington County Times on January 11, 2021. Filing written notice with the clerk of Delanco Township on January 11, 2021. And posting the notice electronically on the district website, www.delanco.com on January 11, 2021. Okay, thank you. So welcome everyone. We appreciate your attendance this evening. We intend to go over a couple of items that hopefully will not take up too much of your time. We have the vice president vote that we must address and hopefully will resolve as well as a brief budget presentation. Let's open the meeting up for public comment on agenda items only, please. Also, uh, Mrs. Karamanugian, we did not have public comment on the online form that was checked earlier today. Excellent. I mean, not necessarily excellent, but thank you. <laughs> okay, if we don't have any comment on public comment on agenda items, we'll close that and we will go into the superintendent's report, Mr. Mersinger. All right, thank you very much. So uh, as you'll see, this is a very short superintendent's report. A motion is requested for the following item. A, postponement of the district's NJ CUSAC comprehensive review until 2021-2022. A motion is requested for that item. I move. Second. I, who's, who was first and second? Bob was first and Harry was second. Questions or, mm -hmm. Questions or comments? I, I have concerns with, with delaying the CUSAC evaluation. Um, it seems to me that, that the only downside of doing the evaluation now is that we would end up, if we, if we don't meet certain criteria, we would end up on a district improvement plan, which may or may not be the, the end of the world. I'd, I'd like to hear, uh, if that is indeed the reason, um, uh, Superintendent Mersinger, I'd like to hear more about that or why that would be a problem. Um, so to me, I think, I mean, whether we're gonna to have to deal with the district improvement plan now or a year from now, um, it seems like the outcome is gonna be the same. So why not do the evaluation now? It's a good question. So um, when, when I approached this topic originally over the past few months, uh, it was my intention to move forward and have the, the DPR approved, the, the district performance review approved, which is what happened uh, during the first meeting in January during reorg. But between that point and now, uh, I had a conversation with the county office uh, encouraging us to reconsider that stance. And um, uh, there are many districts in Burlington County that would have been going through a review, either a partial or a full review. And uh, basically everyone except for us and another district had postponed. So it's, you know, you still have this option. He telling me to reconsider it. I talked it over with colleagues. I talked it over with, with team members here. And I felt that, you know, as much as, you know, part of me wants to just stubbornly forge ahead and say, let's do this CUSAC review. Uh, I, 
I didn't want to be unique in that way in the county. So I'd rather, I would rather say, okay, let's go with the advice of the county office and, and postpone it for now, which is actually what every district in the county has done at this point based on what was with me. Sorry, what was shared with me earlier today. I'd like to make a comment of your Dharma. Um, this information, i rather have it sooner than later. The sooner you have information, the faster you can act on it. Also in terms of being unique in the county and doing something different, there's no problem with being unique. So I think we should go ahead and get it done on time. That's my and comment. Do, my, this is Harry. Um, and do what for it? I don't think the state is requiring them. I don't think the state wants to even see them. If that's, it's what I heard that the, basically the governor said, you know, and it was through the governor that it was said that it, forget the CUSAC this year. So it's my goal to not be stubborn and unique in that way. I mean, and really I say stubborn because we could just forge ahead and do it, but we would be the only district in the county. And I'm, I'm just not sure what value there is in that when we know the county is saying no one else is doing this, this option. And, and it sounds to me like the, the underlying message is Please, po please request to postpone. Well, I think there's uh, better places you know, I, to be I think it's, there's value in that. Your energy and the district's energies now than on that. And I think that's the message that was being sent. I mean, that's what I've been trying to say for the last three, four months, that I wouldn't waste a lot of energy on it because it's happening. No, so whatever information we have at this point is great. So when it's picked up and required again, we have what we need. I think it, I think it was better ways to send um, energy in our district during this pandemic period. Mr. Mersinger, Vince Caliguire, if I may. Um, I know there was a sense of urgency before on this, but I mean, how many hours have you put into this project already? Well, my team and I have put a significant amount of work into this. Uh, and it isn't a wasted effort, though, simply because whatever we've done for this year will carry over into next year. I can guarantee that the, the county is going to say, show us documentation from 2021, uh, because it's typically a three, it's a three year span that they're looking at. So during this year's evaluation, if we were to have it, they'd look at this year, last year and the year before, typically. So if we do it next year, they're still going to look at this year's information that we prepared. So I, I don't see it as a wasted effort. Um, but yeah, it was, a, I, I can't give you a number, but it was a significant amount of hours. But at the same time, you know, I would, I, I would prefer, like Mr. Litwack is saying, that because there are additional steps with this, we're not totally done. I would prefer to postpone it simply because our resources elsewhere during this time. Uh, we have COVID-19 situations that we need to address. We have re remote instruction taking place. We have teachers that need our support. We have students and parents that need our support. So, so when all of that is considered, I mean, I, I, it's my, my take on it that if we spend more energy on it now and we're being advised not to, I don't see as much value in that. So I, that's why I'm asking uh, I was asking for this motion and I was, I'm recommending this item. Okay. I, I think it's, um, we're ahead of where other districts are and there's no reason to waste energy mm -hmm. in that regard. There's much to be done right yeah. here, right now for the students. I, th I think you're, you're making a convincing argument. Um, would there be any harm in delaying, in postponing this vote until February 10th? Would that cause a problem with the timing of the paperwork? Yes, um, so I would have loved to wait until February to vote on this, but the county said that we are required to have everything ready by February 5th. So February 10th would be too late. They indicated that to me, they said, no extensions, you know, you cannot submit anything late. So that's why it was added to this agenda. Um, sometimes the timeliness of it doesn't really line up with how we would want to do it. I mean, I, I would have loved to have a, have a more thorough discussion about it before just putting it on an agenda. But at the same time, 
uh, you know, sometimes things are more urgent. So I literally received the guidance on this before it was due. And then the county office called me and said, you have this guidance, here's what we wanna to talk to you about. And then the guidance said, well, you must have everything in by February 5th. Well, you know, we, we knew that the timeline was crunched at that point. The county is saying to delay, but I don't see any reasoning from the county that you've given. They're just saying delay. That's to me, that is not a good reason. This is information that could be useful. And so I do not want to delay. Well, okay. did everybody, did everybody receive, you know, let me did, see did, it. Oh, did all members receive the um, school school board notes digest today? It's the, um, this is the lead story, if you will. I just got mine and I was reading it. And basically it's saying that uh, um, the delay, the gov they're hoping the governor will sign it and it's important, it will sign this important common sense legislation, which is to delay it. Yeah. yeah. And I think, I think the argument that I just saw searching around that was compelling to me was that we're already expending a lot of resources on COVID response and these are extraordinary times. And so it may make sense to delay. I think you're, I think you're, you're persuading me. Uh, and we're also spending a lot of time debating something that I think we yep. just need a vote on. If it's that, yep. if we, if we, if we're going to try and uh, keep moving forward yep. sideways. Let's go to vote. I'm satisfied. Okay. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. So um, all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Dharma opposed. Anybody abstain from voting? Okay, the motion carries. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Doe. Um, see that article. Uh, yeah, it just came today. <laughs> okay, um, normally we have our finance chair and the next aspect, but it's legitimately just a quick sentence that we're gonna mention. So I'm just gonna quickly note it and it's, Basically, a uh, discussion of budget for 2021-2022, led by Victoria LaSalle, business administrator. Vicki? Thank you. I'm going to just share a screen. Okay. Can you see that? I can see you. <laughs> okay. okay, hold on. Ah, uh, something. Uh, there we go. Yes. Not the right one. So you're seeing my open Zoom meetings? <laughs> um, we're seeing, it says, Delanco Township Board of Education budget discussion. Perfect. That's what I want you to see. Okay. So it's a, a, it's a, a budget discussion. It's a short discussion. This typically would happen at the Budget and Finance Committee meeting in January. Um, but due to the circumstances, Mr. Mersinger and I thought it would be better to present it to the whole board. Um, it's an it's an overview of 1920 expenditures. Um, after the audit was done, this will impact the 21-22 budget, and that's why we're discussing it. We'll also touch on the tuition and transportation expenditures from 1920, and a little I'll talk a little bit about the budgeted fund balance and how that impacts the budget process. So this is just a pie chart of the um, total 1920 audit expenditures. And you'll see that about 52% of our expenditures are um, earmarked for salaries and benefits. That's where they were um, paid out to. Um, a significant portion was the tuition expense expenses, about 32%. Um, a very small percentage was spent on facilities at 2%. Transportation expenditures were $414,000, it's about 4%. Um, and the other expenses is about 10%. So for tuition and transportation expenditures, it's not a surprise that this is what the chart looks like because we have been discussing it at pretty much every board meeting. Um, the out of district placements and the expense to the budget. So you'll see it was pretty flat for a while and the last three years it has significantly jumped. Um, and 
the transportation expenditures are in the blue at the bottom. And you can see the last three years that correlating jump in expenses for that. Is that number $3 million? Three million. Okay, thank you. So tuition was just over $3 million. Excuse me, uh, this is Harry. Does that tuition include what we pay to BCIT and to um, Riverside? Yes. Yes, it does. Thank you. Um, I know that we've also discussed some of the professional fees that would be lumped in with these other expenses here. So I just wanted to give you a slide on that. Um, architect fees, you'll see they're very minimal. It's that dark green. We only pay architect fees when the architect actually does work for us. So last year, um, you should remember that we discussed the, uh, the boilers at Pearson. So we had a state plan put in place for that. That was what that fee was for. The year before was the ADA ramp and the LED lighting project. And the year before that was um, an HVAC project. Um, you'll notice the, the lighter green is the audit fees. They've stayed pretty consistent. It did jump up a bit in the last three years. Um, but what you want to look at is um, a notable increase is the legal expenditures. And they are staying pretty, pretty low um, until 1920. You'll see a big increase there. Um, that increase Part of it is due to negotiations. A ton of it is due to COVID and schools closing and reopening and, and all that. Um, and then there, are, there was a significant other increase in um, related legal expenses. That trend has continued in this current school year. Uh, so, why are we talking about expenses from 1920? Because those expenses will affect the budgeted fund balance. And what makes up budgeted fund balance? It's composed of the prior year audited excess surplus. So the 2019-20 audited excess surplus will be budgeted in next year's budget. So 21-22, and that's what we're currently working on right now. What impact does that have? So the 1920 audited excess surplus must be budgeted as revenue in the 21-22 budget. So it is tax dollars that were in excess during that one year. They are, it's mandatory that they are used in the uh, following year's budget. 21-22 excess surplus was $382,000. The 2020-2021 excess surplus was $1.1 million. That was revenue in the current year budget. So the net decrease that we're looking at is $787,000. That decrease is due to um, $504,000 of increased tuition and transportation expenses over um, the 18-19 school year. And then another $102,000 is directly related to other um, special education costs such as OT, PT, one-to-one -one nurses, speech. So this is what our fund balance looks like for the past several years. It is a very concerning chart. And it is something that we have been bringing to the board's attention time after time. So what does all of this mean? Um, it's going to have an impact on the budget development process. The 21-22 budget process will be starting off with a reduction in revenues of at least $787,000. Revenues and appropriations, and appropriations is another word for your expenditures, they must equal so appropriations will have to decrease by the same amount. 
So our next steps, the district is now reviewing the department-based budgets and adjusting them accordingly. The district administration is reviewing program placements and the potential of creating programs in districts to lower the tuition and, and um, transportation costs. Um, we don't know all of our revenues yet, but the state aid numbers are released usually late February or early March. Um, that's where we stand right now with budget preparation for 21-22. And then we will have another presentation in February to let you know where we stand at that point. I just have a quick question for clarification. Um, under next steps, what do you, you're saying district administration is reviewing department-based budgets. Does department-based budgets mean budgets for Department. What does that mean? Um, it means curriculum has a budget and child study team made a budget, facilities has a budget, technology yeah. made a budget. Um, typically, those budgets include recurring costs, items that they need, additional new items that they need, and then items that, like a wish list. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were told this year not to put anything on that wish list review your recurring costs to see if they're actually needed. And, and, and again, with your, with your needs, do you really need it? Is it really a need? Gotcha. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. If I may, uh, Vince Caliguire, um, just to be clear for the increase in tuition on an earlier side of uh, $504,000, that was in uh, 2020. What was the specific reason for the tuition increase? Just so people are clear that we're listening in the audience. As a board member, I know, but. I was trying to go back to that slide. Um, it, was, it was due to a lot of unbudgeted out of district placements. So when you're preparing the budget, you're working with real numbers. We know our students that are out of district right now, so we will budget for them in the next year. And that's going to take precedent over a lot of other expenses because it's required. Um, but, but when someone moves in district or when there's a child already in the district and they have other needs, we need to tend to that. So we place them in the best place possible for them. And then we incur the, the fees that go along with it. Thank you for making that clear. And if I may add for, the, for that budget, that close to $800,000 is almost a big, I believe a 15th or 16th of our total budget. So people understand that number completely. We're talking about almost a million dollars. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Vicki. Um, yeah. Right now, we're over 30% of our budget with uh, out of district placements. Is that correct for tuition? Um, well, the tuition does include Riverside. So that's technically out of district, but it's technically not because that's our sending district. We don't have a high school. So it includes Riverside, BCIT. Right, I am. Might be worth breaking that down. Uh, I'm sorry. At some point, it might be it might be worth breaking that percentage down just so we can get a little more fine grain detail. Sure. Okay. Did you have something else to add, Phil, or should I ask my question? No. Okay. Um, so, if our budget shortfall is just under three quarters of a million dollars, we clearly need to get creative here, and obviously. You know, nobody wants to raise taxes. Um, I was have been looking at the numbers, so it's something I've been thinking about, and I had written to uh, Miss LaSalle and Mr. Mersinger about this, and Miss LaSalle informed me that it is possible that the township could make a contribution to the school district as part of their budget this year. Um, in general, you can get insight into communities' priorities by looking at how they spend their tax dollars. So if you look at the tax dollars for Delanco, 52.8% goes to the school. If you look at Delran, the school gets 65.7%. If you look at Beverly, they get 56.3%. Um, and if you look at Riverside, they get 57.4%. Uh, in fact, right now, out of the 40 municipalities in Burlington County, there are only four that have devoted a lower percentage of their taxes to schools. So that just means that we're prioritizing our schools and students less than our neighbors in other towns right now. So I think the township committee has an opportunity here to invest in the future of this town and our kids. The schools in kind of dire straits and the township is putting money into all kinds of vanity projects like new parks, new police cars, landscaping contracts. 
at the last township committee meeting, we found out it costs forty-seven thousand dollars a year to maintain the turf on the Field of Dreams, which is an unused third baseball field in town, and that could just be part of a teacher's salary. Meanwhile, we're cutting teachers and programs, and our kids are suffering for it. Um, I don't know. It's a defining moment for our town, and we need to decide what our priorities are. So I think we should reach out to the township committee members and ask them to make a contribution to the school district. I don't have a full district, you know, picture of what's happening with the township budget this year, but there is a possibility that instead of raising taxes, which as things stand, we would have to do or make more immediate cuts at the school, we could work with the township to come up with a creative solution. Uh, in a perfect world, they give us 6.2% of the total tax levy towards the schools to cover our gap while we look into ways to be more efficient with our spending. Um, I'd hope that they'd consider this investment in our town's future. So I think that's something that we should reach out to them about. Uh, Catherine, just for a little bit of background, you know, information there. Last year, myself and Rose also went to the township and we explained the situation to them. And the township has their financial problems too. And they were unable to do anything last year. If they could do something this year, it would be absolutely wonderful. But, you know, I know they have a tight budget also. Yeah, I, I you know, I think uh, hopefully us, us reaching out to them and if there are any parents on the call who want to reach out to their township committee members, the way that we spend our tax dollars is reflective of what's important in the community. And if parents feel that the students are not getting a, a big enough um, share of that, then that's something that you should absolutely voice your concerns about. If I, if I may, uh, Vince Caliguire. Um, Mr. Archkilly, I, I, I applaud what you just said. It's, it's a fact of, of being a parent here. We have kids in the school and what we're spending at the school, we cannot sustain it, folks. We're cutting teachers, we're cutting all these things and I, I have a child in this school that I'm, I'm taking away things from and for all these kids in this town they deserve better than being fourth in this county in terms of funding we are we are at a desperate level at this point and folks we've we've as everyone on this board has been on notes we've, we've cut things so many things that that normally aren't cut at a school and we we're dealing with less and less programs it's got to stop at this point it's got to stop because we can't go on like this and sustain the kind of education that we want our kids our grandkids to have here in this town. Whether you, and I wanna say this to people that are against any, any kind of movement on this, I, I'm gonna say this, your, your house value and everything that you do, are, a large part of it is based on the school system and having a school system that, that cannot even come into average terms, it, you know, you, it's not gonna help you in any bit in terms of what your value your house or anything is. The, the, the bottom line is that we, something has to be done. We need more help with this than what's available to us on the board. And these small increments of increases that we're doing over years isn't going to fix this problem. It's it's a tough decision for the town and everyone, but we have to move forward on this and decide where we want our school to be in a few years, because we're, we're we're facing a dilemma. This is a huge amount. I've talked to other people in other towns. This is an incredible obstacle for us. It's going to take something special to happen, whether whether it's taxes or whether it's moving money from the town. We need help, and that's if folks, if if you have kids in the school. Calling your elected officials, letting people know how you feel about this is, is what's important. For everything we want to do in this town and everything we believe in, the values of Delanco, this is what's on the line right now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Vicki. That was a, a nice presentation. Definitely uh, kind of pulled us into where things are right now at this point and where we're going to have to plan for moving forward. Thank um, you. I'm going to move on to old business now. Board reorganization item, election of the board vice president for 2021. The following board members have been nominated for the role of vice president of the Bo Delanco Township Board of Education. Catherine Tershitz Ter Keeley, I'm sorry, Cameron Jenkins and Harry Litwack. The board of education members will vote for one of three board vice president nominees per bylaw 0152 board officers. The default method of voting is a written ballot via email to Ms. LaSalle or, and or Mr. Mersinger, excuse me, and Mr. Mersinger, unless the board agrees to do a roll call vote. So do we want to do it like we did last time or do we wanna do it verbally in a roll call vote? I have no, I have no problem with a roll call vote. I have no problem with the roll, roll call. 
I agree. I have no problem with the roll call. Let's do it. Roll call seems very effective here. Okay. Harry? Yeah, roll call's fine with me. Okay. And Catherine? Okay. So we all agree. Uh, Vince, did you? Speak? I'm sorry, you yes, didn't. Um, I'm with you. Okay. Uh, Vera, did you have a comment? Oh, um, no, I'm roll call. Bye. Okay. So everyone's on board for roll call. So I think that'll make it um, a little bit easier, perhaps maybe quicker if possible. So um, Vicki, I guess, do you want to do the roll call? And then when we say, when she asks, says your name, you're going to give the name of the individual whom you're voting for. Okay. Mr. Caliguire. Uh, my vote is for uh, Ms. Teresa Chile. Ms. Dharma. Vote is from uh, Catherine Tursa Chile. Mr. Dovey. Uh, mine is for Harry Litwack. Mr. Cameron Jenkins. My vote is for Mr. Litwack. Mr. Phil Jenkins. Well, guess what, Harry? You got my vote. Sorry, Cameron. <laughs> oh, <I'm> nuts. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Cameron Ugian. Harry Litwack. Mr. Litwack. I vote for myself. Mr. McLaughlin. I'll vote for Mr. Litwack. And Mrs. Tersich Keeley. I will also vote for Mr. Litwack. So Mr. Litwack has the majority of the quorum. Congratulations, right. Mr. Litwack. Congratulations, Congratulations, Mr. Litwack. Congratulations, Harry. Congratulations, well, Harry. Thank you. thank you, folks. And I look forward to working with everyone with equanimity and uh, focusing on problems because uh, I'm getting ready to put my waiters on. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got some uh, swamps to go through. <laughs> and, you know, we, we don't have the ability to oh, miss um... in Delanco. So, We've got to all be on the same lookout for how to help us survive um, the next hurdles that are ahead of us. They're there. Uh, looking behind us isn't going to help us go over the hurdles that are ahead of us. So we have to keep looking forward. So thank you uh, for the people that voted for me. Thank you to the people that didn't vote for me. I look forward to working with everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Harry. Okay. Um, public comment on non-agenda items. Okay. I don't see anybody. I see we have a, uh, a raised hand in the oh, other okay. section. Where is that at? Hi. That would oh. be me. That's been, oh. uh, this is Marilyn Entman from 101 Delview. Uh, I lived in Collingswood previously, and one of the things they did to uh, help benefit the township, and I'm not sure whether it would help the school district, but they gave an incentive to switch the dual family households to single family household. Uh, does that benefit the school district in some way? I have it. My initial feeling in Delanco is that that would end up affecting such a small fraction uh, of the houses in town that it would, it maybe would not reduce the, the population of students that much. That's, that's my initial feeling. What does anybody else think? I tend to agree with you and it is scale. It's what, you know, um, you get different fish in the Delaware than you get in the Rancocca. Is free. <laughs> um, but that, that's worth considering. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, we, we, yeah, we, I, I say leave no stone unturned at this point. Okay. Is there anybody else that would like to uh, comment on our agenda item? There, there was a hand raised. Uh, for yeah, that's me. I am curious, I just wanted to know, to know what the status of the teachers' contracts is. I know that the supers was renewed and the teachers was not, yet his was early. And I'm 
try to figure out what the reasoning for that was. So we're in current negotiations, so we're not unable to discuss that information at this time. Okay, I understand being in nego negotiations, but how come if his it isn't under negotiation, if his is already done, what was the reasoning behind that? Why was that okay to do? You know, I'm, I'm new to the board, but I'm wondering the same thing. Um, and especially because I saw plenty of comments. I mean, hundreds of people completely 100% against it, not one for it, yet it was done anyway. And it was early. And I was also informed that he was paid more money with less responsibility. So I'm just trying to understand. I, I, this contract I'm, really doesn't have relevance on the current negotiations at this time. Time. Um, they're two totally separate entities, and I don't know if it's really even pertinent to discuss the details of that contract at this time. Well, when would that be appropriate? Because we have our teachers who we, we want to put 100% into you know teaching our kids, and we're not getting anywhere with it. They can't be happy about that. There's no way. Nobody wants to discuss their vote for extending Mr. Mersinger's contract contract two years early nobody wants to discuss that i'm sure i voted no on that for the record <laughs> right i'm not asking just about that, that i'm asking about why the teachers haven't been but his has been i know a lot of people are looking for an explanation and being at a standstill for our teachers is not okay with me um, this is susan hodges um i i joined you guys about 8 20. um i can just say we do have a mediation date scheduled we received it today uh so that is from i mean that's that's with the teachers union so um we are they will only give us one date at a time uh because they're so unfortunately backed up so we are we do have a date and um you know other than that i can just say that they are two separate contracts um so the you know the negotiation with the teachers uh, contract is completely separate. Right. I understand that. I, I just assume from what I know, the little bit that I do know, I assume that the superintendent would be responsible for his teachers, you know, and I, if I were a super, I would never accept the contract being renewed a hundred percent early, especially with the state of the school and as bad as it's doing right now. And then allowing our teachers to be what a year and a half past theirs. So I was just trying to get some type of answers as to why and that knowing that there's a date that does help so thank you okay you're welcome okay right. thank you Please. any other uh comments um, right. I, I do have one more <laughs> oh, oh okay so i'm just curious um i know a lot of people in including myself are not 100 percent sure on how this works with the school board and everything else I don't know if it would be possible for information to be written up and put out there, sent to everyone that explained exactly how it works, why it works, what difference it would make if people were involved. I feel like people aren't involved because they don't have the information to be involved. And I think that's important. I think it would make a huge difference for our town and the students and the parents if they were informed. Uh, how and in, involved and informed about what? About how everything works. We get these emails saying, oh, here's a board meeting. It's at this time. But we don't know what difference it makes if we come or we don't come or if we speak up about what. We don't know. Okay. A lot of people. Yeah. Don't. What, I, what, I, what I don't quite understand is your lack of ability or anyone's lack of ability. I mean, to do what you're doing now, which is to join the board meeting. I mean, it's not, nothing's being hidden. Everything's out in the open. They're open meetings. With, right, with all due respect, to, I, I, I disagree, uh, Harry. I think that we could be doing more to involve parents, involve the communities. And that begins with communicating. I mean, uh, I would say <laughs> from teaching myself about the school board over the past year, it is really complicated and the financial uh, information in the packets is very dense. Um, I think some more annotation, maybe just an expert. I'm not sure what this looks like. Maybe it's a, a workshop 
where we try you know educate some whoever whichever parents are interested maybe it means writing up some kind of a manual maybe it means just having more of a kind of open communicative presence on Facebook as a board um, but something has to change I, I completely agree with and thank you for for, uh, for the as, comment as a board member I feel the same way as that you do Candace and I'm on the board I have to research everything um, I'm not not allowed to speak about what I found find out even when I say that I'm a resident I'm not allowed to say how I vote so that's why I'm educating everyone about going to the board minutes I investigated something about mistakes that were done in 2015 and 2016 I'm sure nobody wants me to talk about that right now and just by way of explanation but, uh, for Candace uh, Vera is referring to uh, the, the current Board of Education policy uh, prohibits board of ed members from talking about current board matters on social media on Facebook. Um, that's subject to change. And of course, Vera is uh, the chair of the policy committee, and I'm on that committee as well. And so, is um, the um, I have, I have a question, Steve. Steve, I have a yeah. question. Is the level of trust, does that have anything to do with this beyond, I mean, just a basic level of trust that people are elected to, to the board? You were elected to the board. It'd be like me saying, to you, how come you don't know everything yet? You were elected to the board. You're supposed to know it. You're supposed to tell me everything I want to know when I want to know it. That's what's coming. That's what I'm hearing coming from the public. No, I, th I think I'm just saying we should be more proactive. We, we might as well be. I mean, if we're voting on you know X, Y, and Z issues in the upcoming meeting, why not explain? We only benefit from more educated public, especially from the well, parents. It, and that's true. So what the parents can do, Candace, this is a great option. You can look, we have our policies posted on our board website, and it will provide you with some good insight as to what you can and can't do as board members. There are specific ones denoted for board members. And you'll see there's a lot of policies and bylaws that we must follow because that's the law. We must stay within our legal parameters. But that is a great place. So if you're looking to find out why can't the board do this, look at the policy because you'll certainly be able to get quite a bit of information as to why we are or are not commenting, whether it be in on media, social media or even at the media themselves. Well, one final comment for anyone out there who's educating uh, themselves about education policy in New Jersey. Um, I mean, I can recommend uh, NJ Spotlight News is really excellent. It's a general news program uh, put out by NJ TV and it includes a lot of uh, education policy in their coverage. So that's a that that there's five days a week and I recommend it. So one more thing as far as finding out things and as a board member needing to research and do that on my own. Um, we had a discussion about conflict of interest and what I brought up last meeting in which Mr. Mersinger said I was trying to discredit a board member when I wasn't. I appreciated the e email that said there were mistakes made in the past, meaning I wasn't discrediting. I uncovered some mistakes, but in that email, I didn't get the information that I wanted, which is when, if a board member is a salaried employee of a business that the district does business with or gives payments to, if that board member is a salaried employee, they need to recuse themselves. Is on voting on contracts or in making payments. Is that correct or not? I wrote about this in an email and I did not get an answer. I just got the phrase that what happened in 2015 and 2016 was a mistake. I did not get an answer. Does anybody want to answer that right now? Vera, that is correct, that that's a conflict. We have Susan Hodges here, she's our solicitor. She and I had an extensive discussion of this after the board meeting. And then I shared uh, a, an email with the board related to this topic. So salaried employees also need to recuse themselves. I just want to be clear on that. If there's a payment or a contract with a district, is that correct? Because Mr. Mersinger, that was not the information you gave me at the last board meeting. At the last board meeting, I, as I said, I got the sense that you were bringing up a topic uh, about a certain board member, and I wasn't certain why. It, it seemed to come out of left field. I only wanted guidelines, and that is why I'm bringing it up again today. 
So Ms. Mrs. Were... Hodges, I'll yes. direct it to you if I could. If a board member is a salaried employee or an owner or a certain percentage of an owner and there's a contract before the board or a payment that the board is paying out to that business, does the board member need to recuse themselves? Yes. Okay, thank you for that nice, straight, clear answer. That's You're what welcome. they're supposed to do. If they're acting ethically, correct? Well, Harry, you were a member on the board when we did have a board member that should have recused themselves in 2016, so. I can only account for my own ethics, Vera. Well, you didn't know, so now I'm making it clear to everyone. Yeah. Well, I'm still not sure what happened, but. Water over the know. bridge. Um, yeah, but, but, but people could come back and run if they've done that before. Vera's got a point on that. Any members who want to know details, apparently I'm not allowed to share details with the public, but with a board member, I'd be happy to share the um, the research that I did and I shared with Mr. Mersinger and Mrs. Uh, Kerman. Yeah. The, the message I shared with the board indicated from Susan Hodges that a vote that takes place that in the past, we would have to look at whether it influenced the overall vote. So for example, you know, was it a five to four vote? And that vote changed the way that the, the, the overall I vote. understand, and I did read that. I was talking about a salaried employee. That was the distinction that I was bringing up that you did not bring up at the last meeting. You brought up yep. that the person was not an owner. That is not the deciding factor. It's an owner percentage interest or a salaried employee. I'm, 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 I'm trying I'm, to be very clear. I am aware of that and it is very clear to me. What I was indicating in the last meeting was that it didn't seem relevant because number one, it's in the past, it didn't influence the overall vote and it was an error. It was it was not any kind of malicious intent. It seemed to be an error. And but it happened two years in a row. It happened two years in a row on very, I would assume very, uh, Contracts for a lot of money, or the single contract. So I'll leave it at that. The contract for not clear. for a lot of money. It was Mr. clearly indicated what for the kind of insurance contract want, in 2015 and 2016. The insurance broker contract you're saying was not a significant amount of money. The insurance broker contract 2015 I, and I'm, 2016. You know, I I think what I'm going to do is uh, discretion is the 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 better part of valor here. And I'm going to say, I'm not going to engage in this debate, first of all. And second of all, we're talking about something that took place four or five years ago, where a board member may have voted out of, you know, out of place when it comes to a conflict and people didn't catch it. I, I, I'm not sure what else to say about That's it. That's okay, going forward, we'll, we'll do better. We just have to be honest about past mistakes. We'll do forward going, you know, going yeah. forward, we'll do better. I think we, we all need to be vigilant. That starts with the board president and the, and the superintendent, frankly. Um, we all need to be vigilant for conflicts of interest. I think your point is uh, completely you know, valid, Vera, and, and I hear you. Um, so we're going to... Thank you. I'll, I'll do my best. It's good that you're bringing that up, Vera, but I also... Are, are you looking for a specific remedy? The remedy is what was already talked about. It's very clear now where it wasn't clear before. You don't have to be a business owner. If you are a salaried employee, well, I don't want to rehash it, but I, the clarity okay. is the uh, remedy. So the clarity the is that the remedy. That was the point that was a sticking point for you. That was I, I don't think I need to talk about it. I, I already said it very clearly, so let's move on. Yeah, I know, but, it, but my concern is that it, it seems like you're looking for things and which is fine. That's part of the job, but that's why I'm asking. What kind of remedy? What do you? What? What is uh, the, the remedy? Is for us to understand the ethics rules very clearly, and also the public can just Google okay. NJDOE and type in the word disclosure, and by googling that, you'll get to disclosures. Um, and you'll be able to see everybody's financial disclosure, any board member you search by last name. Um, you look at, you can look at what contracts were voted on in the January minutes. If this were to happen um, again, I, th I think that the, 
if this incident were to happen, you know, something like this were to happen again, I think the remedy would be uh, censure, especially if, if, the, if, if the person who um, made that vote were still on the board. And we can issue a formal censure as a board. Uh, in this why case, maybe we... that's not appropriate, but that would be, you know, that's the, that's the tool we have in the future. Why don't we, aren't we going to have ethics training quite Yeah, soon? so I think that'll that help clear. Way to, yes, to Harry, you're right. That question during, rather than for us to go off on our own tangents of which we individually would like to, or how we would like to meet out uh, fairness. Yeah. Just what, what were the guidelines we're supposed to be operating under, whether we choose to or not. I mean, I just thought it quite interesting today, and I, and I don't want to get political about this, but one of the last things that President Trump did was rescind his ethics decree from- I saw that. When, yeah. That's, yeah. That's quite interesting. Interesting. <laughs> okay. All good points, but yeah, we can definitely uh, be very vigilant and do our due diligence to take in the information that we receive during our ethics trainings to be more um, fair yeah, everyone. and equitable. Yes. Yeah, everyone, yes. absolutely. Yes. Are there built-in remedies? If not, do we have to, do we as a local board create our own remedy for censorship? But we, you know, certain acts. Right. I think, so I think I, having, I a, having so a formal censure on, you know, in the minutes is somewhat powerful. I mean, that's a good starting point. I mean, if what normally up. happens is that, you know, an ethics complaint is filed and the, then a censure would be, would come from the school ethics commission. Um, okay. Okay. But, but I, you know, I know that you are going to have training on this, but I would just say that if, if, if somebody is at a board meeting and you believe someone might be voting on something that they shouldn't, just bring it up. There's no reason to wait. Um, they might have forgotten. Um, that means that, you, you know, and there's certainly nothing wrong with another board member saying, oh, I don't think you and you should vote on this because of, you know, you have a family member or whatever it might be. Nothing wrong with that. Mrs. Hodges, since you're here and, yeah. um, and just very quickly, um, as a board, I want to be clear because I don't want to commit any ethical violations. If somebody is asking me how, how I voted and it's not during a meeting, this is public record. Am I allowed to tell them how I voted outside of a meeting or is that illegal to inform the voters how you voted? Your, your votes should be done in public session. So they should be recorded in public session and there, there's no reason that you can't confirm how you voted. So if I'm on Facebook and I'm speaking as a resident, but fault. am I allowed in that instance to say, not maybe even discussing it, but just saying I voted yes or no, is that legally permissible on social media? So uh, the social media issue is, a, I would say it's a little bit more challenging um, because you guys, I believe you have your own policy on social media and how your board wants people to act on social media. Um, so I would say whatever your policy says on that is is really what should govern how you act on social media. So my because final, it's very hard. My final yeah. question on that is if our policy is not in sync with state policy or even federal policy in terms of First Amendment protections, if our policy is not in sync that way, do we therefore follow the policy or I could file an, um, uh, I could file a question with the Ethics Commission, I guess. Um, now, I don't know the answer to that. If you could file um, with the Ethics Commission about a concern over a board policy, I would, I would think the normal I guess root would be, you know, bring up whatever your concerns are on a specific policy and and have that reviewed to make sure that it is compliant with the law. I don't I I've never seen an ethics complaint over a specific board policy like, you know, the either this board policy is is inappropriate and here's why or illegal and here's why. Um, if you believe that to be the case, I, I think I would, you know, bring it up now as far as within you know, the proper channels. Um, so whoever's on the policy committee should, you know, that that person, the chair of the policy committee, I would start with them. Yeah. Okay, that's so, so, me, so thank Vera, you. Yeah. Well, I'll just note that Vera, Dharma, Vera is the chair of the policy committee. And well, so we're gonna be, we're gonna be talking about yeah. these uh, yeah. in the next yeah. couple months. So okay. I look forward to this conversation. And this is Peggy Hawkins. Can I ask a quick question? 
I'm trying to get it here. Um, I, I live at 200 Lilac Lane. I've been a Delanco resident a long time and I'm the very proud president of our DTEA. Um, since you all brought it up about negotiations and about a mediation date, when did we get that date? Because- Today, I, I think it was today. Okay, because I was gonna say we, as of now, we weren't notified of the date. I was just curious. Well, um, actually, if, I mean, I could actually go check. I actually emailed the board today that I got confirmation from um, Perk that the, the one date was acceptable. So sat, somebody to him and said which dates were okay. So right, uh, okay. that's where it stands. And, and literally we got confirmation today. All right, very good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Um, do we have a need to go into executive session? I actually would uh, like to request executive session to discuss the terms of negotiation for board members who were not present at meetings last year. Okay. Um, is everybody in agreement that we can, or everyone's comfortable going into executive session, except those with conflicts? Um, are, are the people prepared that the people that we're going to ask questions of, which I'm assuming our administrators, are they ready or prepared for, for that? The people like I'm on negotiations committee now. I have no idea where we are. So I, would I think, be, I think would we can go into form. executive then if everybody's in agreement. We are ready. And we also invited Susan to the meeting. Susan was aware ahead of time that there might be questions from the board about this. If Susan is able to participate, that would be great. But again, as Marissa, as you said, you know, we do have a conflicted member. And we also would go into executive. I would send a link to the board members specifically saying, uh, go, go to executive session here using this link. Uh, and of course, members of the public would not be part of that. Uh, but we would come back into public session to adjourn. Um, I have no problem uh, leaving the meeting now. I just want to make a comment that um, I disagree with having Stephen Lohr on the negotiating committee since he is no longer a board member. I just want to make that comment. I'm not being involved in negotiations by making that comment. I'm just saying that he's no longer on the board, so he should not be involved in negotiations. Okay, thank you. Um, just make sure, Vera, that you um, wait around because I think, how long do you think we'll be in um, executive? Like maybe 10 minutes? minutes? I don't even, can, I mean, I, there's not a lot of specifics that I can share um, only because I don't actually have that file with me because I was in another meeting and I drove, um, I, I'm home now, but uh, but I can at least, you know, this we're not going to be making any decisions um, mm -hmm. or, you know, we can't do that. And it's just sort of an update for those not board members that aren't on the negotiations committee. Okay. So I need to stay, right? Like so you go into executive and I leave but someone can call me on the phone to log back on, or how would we do that? I think Joe said he was going to send out a new link. Vera, okay. if you if you leave your uh, if you just leave Zoom open, you'll see all of us disappear, and then when the executive session is over, we'll reappear. So just leave your sound on. Okay, I'll just like go on the internet and <laughs> <laughs> so so just leave this meeting, but leave Zoom up. I don't, I'm exactly. not really don't leave sure. the meet, don't don't leave the meeting. Just leave your Zoom up, but don't leave the meeting. If you leave the meeting, leave the meeting running. <laughs> so yeah. I don't need to do anything. I just no, need get up to and walk hold. away. Yeah, <laughs> but I have to see the screen, so I don't get it. I really don't get it. You'll hear us talk we'll when we come back. Yeah, you'll hear us when we come back. We have to give an estimate of the time when we'll so be back. Let's do 15 minutes because that hopefully is excessive. <laughs> All right, that's good. So in 15 minutes, we'll be back. And um, OK, so I need a motion to go into executive session. Motion. I'll second. Okay. Who second? Uh, that's me, Steve. Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? OK, let's go into executive session. So we'll leave this meeting. And Mr. Mercinger will send us a link to go into executive.
Excellent. The link has just been sent. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. And then are we all in favor to adjourn executive session? Yes. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. Okay, so now again, I make a motion to adjourn or I'm asking for a motion to adjourn. And we have to come back in. We have to come back in first, don't we? We're in, we're in public session now. Oh, we came back in, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, can somebody provide a motion to adjourn? I'm, I motion to adjourn. adjourn. Thank you. Second. Second. And Phil, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. okay, thanks everybody. Good night. Have a good night, guys. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night.